now we are going to see the dual nature of radiation and matter dual nature means uh, two different natures of the matter waves particle nature wave nature before going to see the the whole analysis of this dual nature we should see the introduction about this chapter what is the introduction for this one any topic or any concept that was not derived at the first time it was uh, uh, the have hypothesis it was the addition of many hypotheses many rules many postulates sometimes those postulates may be prediction may not be true also so these all things we should know so what is the introduction about this chapter electromagnetic induction means change in magnetic field produces the induced emf change in electric field produces the magnetic field this electromagnetic induction discovered by michael faraday so we know that michael faraday's electromagnetic equations four electromagnetic equations were discussed so this was happened and after that some other scientists came and they visualized the production and propagation of the electromagnetic radiations not only this faraday and many other they he caused he just observed the propag uh, the uh, field propagations e to m or m to e but uh, the other scientists who tried to propagate the electromagnetic waves with respect to the different wavelengths these wavelengths are we have discussed in the electromagnetic waves lesson so what i am going to say is in 1895 the major discovery in physics rangen william rangen the first nobel laureate in physics he discovered the x ray means our radioactive materials which always emits the radiation because of that emission of the radiation on the photographic film he saw the energy band level next one in 1897 jj thomson discovered the electrons electron discovery so these two scientists these two inventions really changed the thinking of the people about the science from this things we can understood that uh, invisible analysis means analysis of the invisible particles are started electron is a invisible particle this concept of electron was well used in atomic structure and nucleus so what are the scientists discovered whenever some gases are traveling from one end to the another end in a gas tubes they can conduct the electricity and they are releasing when the whenever a plate which is connected which is inside the glass tube when they connected to the positive terminal it is releasing the negatively charged particles because of that at the collector part the sparks are appeared these sparks are nothing but the some fluorescence appearance of the waves this fluorescence is due to the its uh, different effects inside so what are those things we are going to discuss now next discovery is uh, cathode rays actually this was the first discovery which is a milestone in physics which is useful to understand the atomic structure and nuclei but the the name of this race was derived after the discovery of electrons so that's why uh, instead of uh, in spite of a year of the searching or year of the discover i am writing the cathode ray in the third range so william crookes is the scientist cathode ray discovery by the william crookes in 1870 actually this is the first discovery when compared to the jj thomson's electrons discovery okay and the electromagnetic induction by the michael faraday and the different scientists but the existence of cathode the clear understanding of the cathode rays was 
really observed and really they came to understand whenever the jj damson explains about the electron emission and the emission of the electrons so whenever there is a gas tube which is filled with gas and it is inside the gas tube two terminals positive and negative terminals are there whenever it is connected to a power source there is a possibility for the emission of cathode rays from cathode to anode because they are negatively charged particles and they are negatively charged particles because of this negativity they are approaching towards the positively charged electrode or positively connected electrode so this cathode rays in nature they are similar to the electrons whenever these cathode rays are approach to the collector plate they have observed the fluorescence also fluorescence means some sparks which are with different colors the scientists observed this fluorescence is due to the it depends upon the nature of the gas inside and nature of the metal plate which is acting at the collector as a receiver so this fluorescence is due to the atomic excitation or de excitation within the atomic structure so these are the major discoveries which really influenced the atomic structure and the thinking of the people about the science and one more thing based on all these content mr j j thompson discovered the e by m ratio of the electron what is the meaning of e by m ratio specific charge charge per unit mass and his experiments proved this is the e by m ratio of electron 1.76 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb per kg coulomb is the unit of charge kg is the charge uh, unit of the mass of a charged particle and not only these things many discoveries later proved the emission of electrons at different situations one scientist his name is millikan he proved the charge of a charged particle nothing but the electron is quantized the quantization of charge millikan did oil drop experiment so this oil drop experiment really proved the quantization of the charge then we concluded that q is equal to ne nothing but 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs where n is equal to number of electrons so this is the understanding we got to know about the different experiment through the different experiments did by different scientists and this fluorescence property of the ions nothing but the cathode rays or electrons or electromagnetic waves are this is possible whenever at low pressure also means a low pressure of 0.001 mm of mercury at this pressure also the fluorescence of the particles is clearly visible so this is the introduction about this matter means the radiation means this is all the set to be radiation electromagnetic radiation maybe electronic radiation maybe or cathode ray radiation maybe so we will see the one by one and the similarities with respect to the different graphs now we will see electron emission or emission of electrons in which way these electrons will be emitted we know that there are called free electrons which are available for the chemical bonding and these free electrons can conduct the electricity means these are the reason free electrons means the electrons which are at the lowest orbital the last orbital which are free from the ionic bonding also means the influence of nucleus is not that much on them let me see one example if you see sodium sodium nucleus first orbital second orbital third orbital 1s2 2s2 2p6 sodium atomic number is 11 so what can what we can understand that the 2 and 6 will be in the second orbital second subshell k l m n subshells are there so like that first orbital 2 
with just a clear uh, just an assumed picture 2 8 10 1 on this last electron the orbital the electron which is in the last orbital the influence of the nucleus is not that much means this is loosely bound when compared to the electrons in the first two orbitals or first two energy levels so this electron in the in terms of sodium the electron which is in the last orbital is called free electron what is the meaning of free electrons the free electrons are free from the bonding no in such an influence so these free electrons sometimes it causes to valency and these are available for the conduction of current in case of metals so whenever you want to eject an electron from any element or from a metal surface we should do two things first one suppose if this is the metal this metal contains n number of electrons inside because metals are conductors Conduction is possible only through the electrons. Let us like. You are applying an external energy. With respect to your applied energy, these electrons should respond and these electrons should come out. The emission of electrons means the emission of the electrons from the metal surface we are thinking. But what are the possibilities in this case? Whenever you are applying the external energy, the electrons already inside the metal surface are bounded with the force of attraction. Bounded with force of attraction. Means the external energy what an observer is applying should overcome the force of attraction between the electrons on the metal surface and the electron should come out see the electrons are like this now the external force which is applied which is applied from the external source it should disturb this force of attraction it should disturb the bonding of the electrons then one electron will come out means we should apply the energy to disturb the force of attraction between the electrons which is in the metal surface which is on the metal surface or which is inside the metal minimum amount of energy required to emit one electron from the metal surface is called work function minimum amount of work required to emit one electron from metal surface is called work function the symbol of the work function is phi naught so at some minimum energy whenever you apply the minimum energy that minimum if without that minimum energy electrons won't come out that is said to be work function of that given metal means suppose it is iron it has some work function it is copper it has some work function so if suppose what is the unit of this work function work function is to disturb the gap between the electrons the gap between the electrons is in electron volts so work function is in in measured with the electron volts only so one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 90 joules we know that w is equal to vq so if one volt of potential applied to bring one coulomb of charge the amount of work done is equal to one electron volt that is nothing but 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 19 joule so this is the units of work function now we will see what are the different work functions for the different metals and how these electrons are emitted through different process now we will see one list of work functions for the different metals so here this is the metal here is the work function so the work function is in electron volts that is the units to measure not 
in electron holes. So, if you go to the increasing order of the electron volts, see a cesium 2.14 means if you want to remove one electron from the surface of the cesium metal, we should apply 2.14 electron volts of energy. Next one, potassium 2.3. To remove one electron from the potassium metal surface, we should need 2.3 electrons so volts of energy should be applied. Next, sodium is a metal and the work function is 2.75 EV. Next one, calcium 3.2. If you want to remove one electron from a calcium atom or calcium metal surface, we should apply 3.2 EV of energy. Molybdenum 4.17 EV. Lead plumbum, the Italian name plumbum. PB, we should apply 4.25 EV of energy. These are the major metals which has the work function which is in the order of 2 to 4.2. After that we will see the one more list. Same type, again I am writing metal and work function. So after the lead we will go to the aluminum. This is also one of the metal most widely used metal element it has a work function 4.28 the fine art in ev we can write in ev we wrote on the top no need to mention for each time so next metal is mercury one of the metal which is in the liquid state 4.49 ev next copper most widely used metal for the conduction of electrons all the electric wires are made up of copper the copper's work function is 4.65 ev next nickel mostly this nickel material is metal is used to made up the magnets nickel and chromium these are all the main important elements in the magnet 5.15 ev plutonium 5.65 ev Plutonium is a radioactive element. So we should need 5.65 electron volts of energy to emit one electron from the plutonium. That's why this plutonium is was utilized in, was used in manufacturing of the atom bombs. For the explosion of atom bombs, so first they will explode the hydrogen bomb, which creates the sufficient atmosphere for to produce this much of work function inside the plutonium. So this is the list of uh, uh, major metals and with their respect to their work function. So for cesium it is very easy to emit the electron but for plutonium it needs 5.65 electron volts of energy to emit one electron. So most, most widely used metals aluminium, copper, mercury so it has in the range of 4 to 4.2 to 4.65. Sodium okay the first metal in the list it has 2.75 EV of energy potassium also 2.3 ev of energy now we will see the different ways to emit the electrons or the emission of electrons different ways to emit the electron The first method is thermionic emission. So what is the meaning of thermionic emission? Means emission of electron by thermal. Thermal means heat energy. 
so by applying a sufficient heat energy or by heating a metal or by heating the surroundings we can remove an electron we can emit an electron from a metal surface or from the metal inside the metal so by applying a suitable heat energy emission of electron takes place this procedure is called thermionic emission mostly this thermionic emission is useful for bomb explosions so applying the sufficient heat energy heat energy the emission of electron takes place takes place this emission is called thermionic emissions in case of atomic bomb explosions we can see this first they will explode the hydrogen bomb and this hydrogen bomb can create the suitable amount of heat energy to uh, detect or to emit one electron for the next bomb which is to be operated in the next of the hydrogen so this is the one one type to emit the electron next one is field emission so what is field emission by producing a sufficient or sometimes sufficient means it should be high range by producing the high amount of the voltages or high amount of the electric fields it is possible to emit one electron by applying we can say by applying by applying the huge amount of electric fields the emission of electrons takes place means we should apply more amount or a large amount of uh, electric field more the large quantity of electric field how much it is actually it should be in the order of 10 to the power of 8 volts so electric field is f by q naught so newton per coulomb or volts per meter because uh, we know that v is equal to e dot r so e is equal to v by r so v is potential r is distance means the field expansion of 2 10 to the power of 8 volts for 1 meter then the f in field emission the electrons will release it out so this is uh, one of the best way for the release of cathode rays in uh, glass tubes example is emission of cathode rays in gas tubes this is the best example next we will see the photoelectric emission photoelectric emission means it is like this so what is the meaning of photoelectric emission photoelectric emission means photo means light Photosensitive materials means the materials which are sensible to the propagation of light or falling of the light or incident of the light. So photoelectric emission means there is a metal surface or metal film whenever you are illuminated a light towards the metal surface of suitable frequency then emission of electrons takes place. So illumination of light on a metal surface which causes to emit the electrons so the emission of electrons with respect to the applied light of suitable frequency and intensity is called photoelectric emission 
the electrons which are released in this emission are called photoelectrons this effect is called photoelectric effect one of the major discovery in physics the emission of electrons from a metal surface by the incidence of or incident of light on a metal surface. is called photoelectric emission. These electrons are called photoelectrons this effect is called photoelectric effect now we will see what is photoelectric effect who did this experiment what are the results so what is photoelectric effect? There are two scientists, uh, they have explained about the photoelectric effect in different way. Different way means uh, the materials what they used are different but the result is same orientation. The first one is hedge observation. So what is the hedge observation? Hedge is a scientist. So in his name, the SI unit of frequency is also hedge. So what is the hedge observation? So he has observed some sparks whenever the emitted electrons are approaching towards the metal plate in a glass tube. Sparks are appeared when the electrons are cathode rays. approached towards the collector plate so this is very very important so if this is the case what he observed is the electrons can travel from high potential to low potential or low potential to high potential whenever a sufficient field is applied and this emission of electrons through a glass tube okay uh, in a form of sparks which causes to the photoelectric current this is the observation by Hedge. next were two more scientists did the same experiment with different metals and different samples like zinc ultraviolet radiation infrared radiation like this so what are those observations what is the experimental setup we will see now next observation is Halvox and Leonard's observations what is their observations they took the metal they irradiated with ultraviolet metal surface and uh, let us suppose take two metal surfaces metal plates these two metal plates are uh, inside the evacuated tube and these two are connected to a voltmeter or the battery next one what we can understand is suppose the, these two scientists what they did one metal plate they focused ultraviolet light this ultraviolet light can disturb the electrons on the metal surface then the emission of electrons takes place and it is reaching the collector plate when he stops the ultraviolet radiation the emission of electrons are also stopped this is the first observation 
then he tried with the different intensities and different frequencies of the ultraviolet radiation with the different metals when he allowed the ultraviolet radiation on a metal plate it is emitting the electrons when he stopped emission also stopped that is the first observation this is a very very important observation in the Hallwax and Leonard's observation in the electro uh, photoelectric effect next he took zinc plate first neutrally charged zinc plate next negatively charged so first he did research on negatively charged zinc plate this is the negatively charged zinc plate he illuminated with ultraviolet radiation whenever an ultraviolet radiation was incident on the surface of the negatively charged zinc metal then what is the observations we can understand is the result of this experiment is zinc lost its entire charge The same UV exposure on the neutrally charged or uncharged zinc, uncharged zinc plate, then it becomes positively charged. See the two observations. This is the zinc plate of a negatively charged UV radiation takes place. The exposure of UV radiation after the result is loss of its entire charge. Whenever in, on the neutrally charged zinc plate with the focused UV radiation it is becoming positively charged what is the reason in the UV radiation the electrons are there these electrons are repelling by the electric field of the negatives then loss of entire charge but here neutrally charged the electrons are exposed towards the neutrally charged zinc plate that's why it is positively charged so by these variations after that they did with the many other ob objects like magnesium rubidium like that with the different frequencies same UV radiation with the different frequencies on different materials what is their conclusion in the last is whatever may be the number of samples they used, number of frequencies they used the conclusion is there is a minimum frequency until and unless the radiation not reached the minimum frequency the emission of electron won't take place so the minimum amount of frequency required for the emission of electron from a metal surface is called threshold frequency. This is the conclusion from this experiment. The symbol of the threshold frequency is nu. What is this one? The minimum frequency required. to emit the electrons from metal surface this is very very important so what we can understand is they did with the many experiments they did with the many samples many radiations of different variable frequencies this is the conclusion so from this experiment we can understand the metals like zinc magnesium they will emit the electrons in form of radiation at a short wavelengths nothing but the high frequency short wavelength but for the remaining metals sodium potassium calcium these things they can emit the electrons at a visible light also sodium potassium calcium at visible light also white light propagation so the electrons which are emitted maybe for the short wavelength propagation or the long wavelength propagation are called photoelectrons this effect is called photoelectric effect 
Now we will see the experimental setup for the photoelectric effect. What is the experimental setup? How it will be used? For photoelectric effect. See, this S is nothing but the source. This is source which is releasing the wave. Maybe a light, maybe any spark. Anyway, the source is releasing the light and this light is falling or incidenting on the collector plate. This is the, this is the receiver. This, so this is like this. See. This plate C and plate A, this plate A, which is receiving the electrons which are irradiated. Okay, A. Yeah. These two are placed inside a evacuated glass tube. This hole is evacuated glass tube, means no gas. These two plates are connected to the commutator. This commutator is connected to the voltmeter and micro ammeter and a load resistor or variable resistor. So what is the functioning of each and every element of the experiment? Whenever this collector plate was focused with the incident radiation, it emits the electron and these electrons reaches to the A, a receiver plate. So C and A will be at a different potentials because C is emitting the electrons, A is re receiving the electron. This is emitter plate, this is collector plate. So in this case, the potential difference between C and A will be observed by the voltmeter. This may variable. So with respect to Ohm's law, if V varies, current also varies. So photoelectric voltage and photoelectric current is variable with respect to the linearity proportional. And this A terminal and C terminal are connected to commutator, the commutator which converts the DC current to the AC current. So this is commutator and a load resistor and battery is connected to maintain the constant to maintain the constant resistance throughout the experiment. So this is the experimental study of the photoelectric effect. Whenever there is a variation in the A and C, with respect to that, we can find out the voltage and current. We can draw the plot between V and current. So this experimental support which helps to find out the incident radiation the effect of frequency third one effect of frequency on stopping potential so we can find out the stopping potential also next one we can find out the threshold frequency retardation potential and what is the effect of incident radiation what is the effect of a frequency of the radiation these all things we are going to see now so this emission continuously flows and there is a large variation in the voltage there is a large variation in the current which helps to maintain the circuit to for the studying of photoelectric effect now we will see the graphs which are helpful to understand the nature of material means in this case we can observe we can find out the nature of material also now we will see the effect of intensity of light intensity of light on photoelectric current so means in the previous experimental setup if the intensity of light is increased what about the amount of intensity reaching the C plate and how many electrons are emitted towards the A plate and what is the corresponding voltage and current by 
changing the by doing the experiment at different intensities of the light sources the scientists concluded that the number of photoelectrons which are emitted is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light so the number of photoelectrons in unit time I can write photoelectrons emitted in unit time unit time is directly proportional to to the intensity of incident light so if intensity of the incident light is increased automatically the current means number of photoelectrons emitted are increased if photoelectrons number is increased the ammeter raising is also increasing a meter which reads the amount of current so the graph between these photoelectrons and intensity of incident light is like this photoelectrons this is intensity of light If two physical quantities are directly proportional to each other, then the graph is a straight line passes through origin. Means a continuously increasing. Means at any time, the slope will be same number. Slope is constant. So this is very very important. Means it photoelectrons emitted or photo current emitted, or we can write photo current also no problem. means passage of electrons is nothing but the current so photo current is directly proportional to intensity of the incident light this is one of the examples or one of the observations we can do with the experimental setup of the photoelectric effect next we will see effect of potential on photoelectric current effect of potential on photo electric current the experimental setup of photoelectric effect has two terminals c and g they both are maintaining at the different potentials now just keep the frequency of the incident radiation is constant and intensity of the incident radiation is constant so intensity and frequency of radiation are constant or constants so which is variable potential is variable to find the photoelectric current so take this is c and a terminals these two are connected to the battery these two are maintaining the different potentials according to the diagram which is given so we know that this collector plate and emitter plate both are at the different potentials with respect to the applied battery now this one is emitting the electrons and these electrons are reaching to the collector plate now just try to vary the potential of this collector plate with respect to this one means this potential is fixed and this is variable whenever the potential of one plate is varying or changing or increasing then the emission electrons are increases even the emission of electrons are increases photoelectric uh, current increases so if this case try to increase or try to change the uh, potential rapidly or regularly 
at one particular voltage or at one particular potential it reaches to the maximum current then try to continue to increase the potential and there will be no change and it will enter to the saturation range so first it starts to increase 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 as the potential increases next it reaches to the maximum whenever it reaches to the maximum current with respect to, to the change in the potential from there onwards there will be no increase or decrease it continues to flow in the saturation range this current is called saturation current so it will be continuously flows like this so increasing increasing maximum saturation now retard the potential in the opposite polarity suppose this a is connected to the positive next this is under the retardation means this a is also under the negative potential c is emitting the negative charge carriers therefore force of repulsion takes place due to the force of repulsion only high energetic electrons can received by the a that means the potential of the a is decreasing and the number of electrons received by the plate is also decreasing that means the photo current will be decreases 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 and yet one particular retarding potential the complete emission of the photoelectrons will be stopped completely stopped so for a given frequency for incident radiation the emission of electrons will be completely stopped that potential is called stopping potential or cut off potential means at a particular potential in the retarding stage or a particular retarding potential at that particular ret retarding potential the complete emission of electrons will be stopped this potential is called retarding potential now we will see the graph which relates to the potential to the photoelectric current see this is the graph so what is the meaning of this graph yes as the potential is increases yes so the photo current amount increases if number of the if collector plate potential increasing as the photo current increases at one particular value photo current reaches to the saturation state this is saturation and after that it continues to be in the saturation and directly a straight line will be appeared and there will be no more increase in the potential whenever if we reverse the potentials or polarities the potential will continuously decreases 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 and completely the emission of electron completely stopped at one particular potential this is called stopping potential or stopping potential represented by v not whenever these electrons are moving it has kinetic energy and their maximum kinetic energy at the maximum current is e v not where e is charge v e v not is the maximum potential or stopping potential so this is the information about the collector plate potential so what we can understand is photoelectric current is independent of the incident radiation and directly proportional to the collector plate potential but after one limit it will be under the maximum saturation range now we will see the effect of incident radiation on stopping potential so there is a graph between incident radiation and stopping potential remaining intensity and frequency are constant so listen this one this is the potential from these potentials okay this uh, potential and collector plate potential and this is the incident radiation at three different stopping potentials the frequency the potential increases and incident radiation is also increases but one saturation point will be observed in the graph this is saturation point is called saturated collector plate potential maybe this stopping potential is different for different elements but saturation is constant 
this is very very important point means up to one level this incident radiation and color plate potential are directly proportional to each other once it crosses crosses to the maximum range it reaches to the saturated potential in this saturation it is independent of frequency and intensity of light suppose if we did the experiment for the two different metals the graph will be like this this is metal a this is metal b so which has high slope it has a high stopping potential so this is the a picture analysis of the photoelectric effect but the to these things mr einstein gave a wave picture that is said to be wave analysis of the photoelectric effect means einstein did some modifications to the photoelectric effect he didn't agree with the some of the postulates of the photoelectric effect now we are observing a graph which relates the stopping potential and to the frequency of incident radiation yes frequency of incident radiation took on x axis we can say it as x axis stopping potential took an y axis so what is the nature of the graph what are the implications implications from the graph we are going to see now yeah the stopping potential is varying linearly with the frequency of incident radiation there are no curves no distortions or no irregular plots along the graph along the line that's why what we can say stopping potential is varying linearly with the frequency where nu is equal to frequency of incident radiation that is the first one what is the second point or second amplification from this graph what is the second amplification c there is a cut off frequency what is this cut off frequency so go back to the threshold frequency the minimum amount of frequency required for the ejection of electron from the metal surface that means for a given photosensitive material there is a cut off frequency and there exists a corresponding stopping potential also so there is a minimum frequency called cut off frequency frequency which corresponds to the stopping potential to the stopping potential see here first point is stopping potential is varying linearly with frequency with frequency means uh, nu so frequency and stopping potential are directly proportional to a given photosensitive material that is one this is one photosensitive material this is another photosensitive material mostly they have the same nature of the slopes so go back to the uh, the planck's constant theorem so e is equal to h nu is the equation so that means e is equal to h nu energy radiated through a radiation is directly proportional to its frequency if frequency is linear linearity with stopping potential then we can say the energy of electromagnetic radiation also linear in relation with stopping potential so if e is proportional to nu and nu is proportional to v then we can write e is proportional to v see energy is directly proportional energy of the radiation is directly proportional to the frequency frequency is linearly in relationship with the potential that's why we can write energy is directly proportional to the potential that means the energy which is radiated in this photoelectric effect is independent of intensity of incident radiation independent of intensity of incident
radiation. So, stopping potential is directly proportional to frequency, means dependent on frequency, but independent on intensity of incident radiation. What is the second point? Yes, one more implication for the second point is for a given photosensitive material, there exists a frequency or there exists a cutoff potential or um, what is this one? Stopping potential where the emission of electron completely stopped. This point we were discussed in the uh, uh, experiments which we discussed through the graphs. So there exists a cutoff frequency. Correspondingly, it becomes to the where the relation is nu is proportional to v that means where nu becomes the cutoff frequency so this cutoff frequency will go to the will vary with the or will be linearly in relationship with the stopping potential at the stopping potential there is no possible for the emission of electrons so this is the relation and these are the implication we can do with the graph and one more thing we can say is there is a time lag whenever a light ray was incident on a metal surface Whenever a light ray was incident on a metal surface, what is the minimum time, time, uh, minimum time taken by an electron to come out of the metal surface? Mostly it will be 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds, mostly. It is the order. This is the minimum time for the ejection of electron from a metal surface after the incident of radiation. So these all things we can implement from this graph. Now we will see some corrections with respect to the wave theory of light. The corrections are photoelectric effect and wave theory of light. Up to now we have discussed that electrons absorb the energy and they will radiate. But there are some problems in the emission of electrons. Means some hidden things are there which are really influencing the emission of electrons. So what are those hidden things? What are the corrections made to the previous theories of the photoelectric effect? We are observing now. The first one is suppose if it is a metal surface, it contains number of electrons. one light was incident it has some energy with frequency so the electrons which are on the top surface should respond to the applied radiation whenever these are not responding the light rays won't penetrate through the remaining part of the metal surface that is a common sense suppose if the front row is not accepting to go deeper it will it should stop at the front row only whenever any one electron absorbed the energy when it is excited or coming out of the metal surface then this place should be refilled with the electron of the next line or next layer that means what we can understand it is not a group matter it is a discrete matter what is the meaning of discreteness one by one not a continuous one one order some gap another order actually this is the prediction in the wave theory of light uh, to explain the photoelectric effect but what is the wave theory wave theory means uh, in the beginning of the 20th century mr F uh, faraday lenz and uh, ampere these all scientists uh, overstead these all scientists are uh, did many experiment after the experiment, they conclude that there are waves. The waves are called electromagnetic waves. These electromagnetic waves have a nature to polarize, diffract, refract, straight line propagation, all these. So what is the meaning of wave theory? electromagnetic waves which contains electric field and as well as magnetic field and they can spread over a space surface they can spread over space with uniform distribution this point is very very important 
means the electromagnetic field is expanding or spreading over a space with the uniform distribution means there is no non uniform it occupies the shape of the circles for a, for our visualization and the radius of the nuclei is a constant and variable with the fixed integrals of multiples so these things this is the minimum introduction about the electromagnetic waves and they can polarize reflect refract diffract what many straight line propagation they can travel to the long distances these are all the different things which are discovered with respect to the wave theory of light and light is behaving like a wave that is a and mr christian huygens also tried to prove the wave theory of light with the example of uh, uh, crescent troughs which are formed in a river when a throne is when a stone is dropped in it so these are all the small examples to understand about the wave theory of light whenever this wave theory of light was discovered many scientists tried to implement the wave theory to the photoelectric effect suppose if it is a wave if it is uniformly distributing though these are the things when uh, the electrons are at the first surface or the top surface so what are the conclusions in the photoelectric effect with respect to the wave theory of light is there is a incident radiation this incident radiation has intensity as well as frequency so this incident radiation has intensity and frequency but wave theory of light explains about the intensity of incident radiation it is neglecting the frequency of incident radiation how well, the conclusions of the photoelectric effect through wave theory of light is follows like this if the intensity of incident radiation is more the electrons will accelerate more and more number of electrons per second will come out it is nothing but the photoelectrons whenever the more number of photoelectrons are coming out of the metal surface then more amount of the photo current we can expect so what is the order intensity is more then the energy received by the photoelectrons will be more if the energy is sufficient to overcome the uh, force of attraction within the lattice surface of the electrons then the electrons will emit this emission will be more or more number of electrons per unit time it causes to more photo current see the whole process is dependent on intensity of the incident radiation but before experiment the graphs we have discussed in the lesson it is proving that there is a relationship between the frequency of the stopping potential frequency to the incident radiation frequency to the energy by the planck's law so this is one of the contradiction in the wave theory of light or wave picture of light to explain the photoelectric effect and one more thing yes it is leaving the frequency aside it is not at all calculating the frequency so they are saying that uh, the photo current is independent of frequency but is dependent on incident radiation that is the first contradiction second suppose some amount of energy was uh, focused or radiated on the metal surface suppose it has some n number of electrons this n number of electrons should absorb the energy at a time because this is a electromagnetic wave field distributes uniformly whenever it is distributed uniformly the whole electrons absorbed the energy but the energy absorbed by individual electron will become e by n which is very less we are saying that it is a discrete manner that means one one electron should come out if the e by n is very less with this less energy how that electron will come out this is also one of the contradiction so because of these contradictions to the classical theory of photoelectric effect 
Mr. Einstein did some modifications to this theorem. Now we will see the, what are the modifications, what are the mm, modifications and what are the adjustments did by the Mr. Einstein about the photoelectric effect. That's it. Next, the Einstein's picture. Mr. Einstein did some modifications. The, what are the modifications? First one, the emission of electrons does not take place like a group one. It takes place like a discrete wave. What is the meaning of discrete one by one? Whenever the electrons are coming out of the metal surface one by one, there is a problem with the energy variation with respect to the electrons. That means, these are the electrons. The electron which received the energy first, if this energy is sufficient to overcome the work function of this metal, then this electron will come out replaced by another. Whenever the field or the electromagnetic nature is uniformly distributed, then these things will come one by one discrete. The more tightly bounded electrons on the metal surface or inside the metal surface, they will emerge out with less energy. What is the reason? Einstein predicted that the energy which we are radiating on the metal surface, some of its energy, means some part, not SUM, it's some part of its energy, utilize it to overcome the bondings are the force of attractions between the electrons on the metal or maybe on the metal surface or inside the metal lattice so this energy have kinetic energy the radiation has kinetic energy and this radiation energy is equal to h in nu because of the planck's law It's a Planck's theorem. If this is the case, the kinetic energy is irradiated on the metal surface. It has already H nu energy. And this energy is sufficient to overcome the work function of the metal surface. Then the kinetic energy of the electrons which are coming out of the metal surface or emitted electrons is H nu minus phi where phi is the work function or we can write phi naught also. This is one of the important point we should know in this case. Though the electrons which are tightly bounded to the metal surface, they will emerge out, emission possible but with less energy because here yeah, the work function is more. I Means some of the more amount of work function is needed for those electrons, if this value is increasing, the K max should be decreases. So, if phi naught increases, K max decreases. So, this is the discrete nature of the radiation. These discretes are called quantum of the energy radiation. Discrete unit is called quanta. This is similar to the Planck's quantum theory. The energy released from an electron may be due to the excitation or de-excitation is in the units of quanta where quanta is called a wave packet. So each electron associated with energy that each energy in a discrete manner is called one quanta. This is very very important. Next this k max should be greater than zero. Otherwise if k max is minimum then or less than zero the emission of electrons won't be possible because the phi naught is in the positive magnitude for any metal. Most of the metals we have seen in this lecture only. So we will see what are the conditions to get the maximum kinetic energy and the remaining equation part. 
So one quanta of energy is absorbed by the electron, then that electron will emit from the metal surface. This is a discrete emission of the electrons, nothing but the discrete electromagnetic radiation in photoelectric effect. So this K max is equal to H nu minus phi naught. So we can say that if K max should be greater than 0, then H nu minus phi naught should be greater than 0. So, H nu is greater than phi naught. Nu is equal to greater than phi naught by H. So, what we can understand where H is constant. We should not say nu is inversely proportional to the H because H is constant. So, we can relate the nu and pi. If work function is more, frequency is less. If work function is less, frequency is more. This is one of the important point we should understand from this prediction. And one more thing, one more important one is whenever the intensity of the incident radiation increases, then the intensity can penetrate through the number of electrons in a given time when, go by, when uh, compared to the sharp beam and the dilute beam. So, in this case, more number of photoelectrons emitted. Electrons emitted. If more number of photoelectrons are emitted, then more amount of the current. More value of photocurrent exists. These points we should know from the Einstein's picture of photoelectric effect. So in Einstein picture, if the incident radiation less, the intensity of incident radiation is less, then is there any delay with the emission of electrons? We should not say like that. We should not say like that. Maybe with a less energy it will emit. That is the one of the important point. So we know that the electromagnetic energy E is equal to EV also. Because work done is QV. So, in place of Q, we can write to EV. That means the amount of work done to emit the electrons from the metal surface is equal to the energy required to emit it. So, EV. So, we can write EV is equal to H nu minus phi naught. Suppose if you want V or V naught, we can get H by E nu minus phi naught. This is similar to Y is equal to Mx plus C. M is equal to slope, slope of straight line. So, what we can understand if you want to get the stopping potential for the incident radiation or for the emission of a photoelectric effect or photoelectrons, we will get an equation H by E nu phi minus phi naught. This H by E is the slope of the graph. When if you draw the graph between V naught and phi naught, means work function to stopping potential, then you will get a uh, one line that lines slope is h by e where h is Planck's constant e is a charge of electron 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs so the slope of the graph between v naught and phi naught is h by e which is similar to the slope of a straight line in the straight line equation m then mr millikan one of the great scientists he tried to disprove this prediction by the einstein so instead of disproving he proved it that is a very very important point so in the in the development of this photoelectric effect from the different scientists so what is the discovery of uh, mr millikan he said and he proved the charge of electron or charge of the charged particle is quantized so mr millikan tried with different samples different metals he tried with the v naught and phi naught and he brought the graph which is constant for 
all metals so h by e is constant so we can say that uh, charge is quantized so this wonderful explanation by the einstein with respect to the equation part has cleared all the doubts in the photoelectric emission so now we will see the concept of photon nothing but the particle nature of matter so what we can understand from this explanation mr a scientist called a h compton in 1924 he did experiments with x rays these x rays are traveling through the different fields thermionic emission electric field emission and photosensitive emission he discovered that the radiation which is coming out of the metal target has energy and momentum this is very very important comma frequency so what we can understand if any radiation is having momentum so we can say that it contains particles momentum is a, a nature of the particle wavelength is a nature of wave these two are collectively combined in the de broglie hypothesis so next we can discuss so momentum is a nature of particle that means the radiation which is coming out of the different metal targets when ah compton did experiments that contains particles he named that particles as photons so the discrete energy which is coming out of the radiation after the incident of intensity light the discrete manner named as photons this photons have natures these are predicted by mr compton only and he took the help of flank's quantum theory also so what are the predictions did by the h compton about the photons there are some points so what are those some points we are going to see now <coughs> 